Praise the Lord and good morning. My name is Pastor Grace Kikuvi from Rebuilding Broken Walls Ministry. I want to take this opportunity to welcome you. And I want to believe that you'll not be disappointed for you have found time to listen to this audio message. This message was preached through Zoom. And I want to tell you that many people have been, say, have been blessed by this message and have received very powerful testimonies of what the Lord has done through this message. Now, if you want to get with us, just like what I told you, we are from Rebuilding Broken Walls Ministries. If you want to get us, please, you can get in touch with me on 254-0721-712. Seven seven four. I repeat two five four zero seven two one seven one two seven seven four. Now our topic today is the powerful horns. We want to talk about the powerful horns, and our key scripture is Zechariah one, verse eighteen to twenty one, and the Bible says, "Then I looked up." And there before me were four horns. I asked the angel who was speaking to me, What are these? He answered me, These are the horns that scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Then the Lord showed me four craftsmen. I asked, What are these coming to do? He answered, These are the horns that scattered Judah so that no one could raise their head. But the craftsmen have come to terrify them and throw them down. Uh, so, you know, and throw them, sorry. They have come to terrify them and throw down these horns of the nations who lifted up their horns against the land of Judah to scatter its people. This is a very interesting uh, portion of the scripture talking about two things, the horns and the craftsmen. Now, when you look at verse, 18, verse 19, it says, these are the horns that scattered. It means there was something that took place. There was some scattering that took place. And the aim was to disgrace Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. And I want to tell you the same thing. That horns are not literal horns, but I'm talking about spiritual horns. I am talking about demonic horns. And every horn has got a task. And the task of the horns we are talking about today, the task was scatter them. The way they have released horns against your family. They have released horns against your destiny. They have released horns against your health that you may be disgraced, that you may be scattered, that you may be disqualified, that you may be disappointed. That is what the enemy has done. But I just want to look at the word, but God sent his craftsmen. God had a solution to what these people were going through. Just like the way God has got a solution to what you are going through. The solution is craftsmen, divine intervention. Let me give you a background information of this scripture. A background information of the book of Zechariah. What I want you to know is that God was very angry at his people. For ignoring his prophet Zechariah, through the years, they decided not to listen to the prophet of God, but they followed the careless leaders who exploited them. Disobedience was the root cause of their problem. Disgrace, torment, spiritual wreck, just because they disobeyed God. They didn't care how they were living. They were so selfish. 
Each one of them was concerned about his peace and his safety, what was happening around his family, what was happening around his life. The rest of it, they were not interested. Now, I want us to understand the mood of the people then and connect it to our attitude today. They guarded their peace and safety as long as they were okay, they were so contented. The attitude was, at least we can eat. At least we are able to sleep. That was the attitude. They disassociated themselves from the problem. Are we different? Let's look at God's intervention. This was the situation. They were living in misery. They were living in disgrace. They were living in torment. They were living in spiritual wreck. Still, God showed mercy to them. Remember, God was angry with them because they were not living right. And they kept on blaming God. Because when they came back from Babylon, the situation in Jerusalem was pathetic. So they were blaming God like me and you. When we are going through problems, when we are going through challenges, sometimes we find ourselves blaming God. Sometimes we find ourselves quarreling with God. But I want to remind you that God is fair. God is faithful. Because the same God who watched them suffer through the horns through the torment that was sent to them, is the same God who showed mercy and he sent the craftsmen. Brethren, I want you to know that our God is merciful. I want you to know that our God is a covenant-keeping God. He is bound to his covenant. He says, my covenant will I not alter. Our God is a good God. In his masses, he sent messengers to patrol the earth. Just go and assess the situation because these people are too busy. Please go and see what is happening. I want you to know that God is looking for one, is looking for someone to stand in the gap so that he does not destroy nations, so that he does not destroy families. It is not the desire of God to see destruction. We push him to get into a point where he allows certain things to happen to our lives. These people were too busy. When you look at Ezekiel 22, 30, he looked for somebody to stand in the gap, to stand before him so that he doesn't destroy a nation, but he did not find any. Why didn't he find any? Because people were too busy with your, their own things. Now, what did God to, do? Verse 10 to 11. God sent messengers to go and see what was happening. That is between verse 10 and 11. So when they went, assessed the situation, they came back with a report. When God sends out his word, he expects a feedback. He expects a report. So when he sent these messengers, they came back with a report and the report is very disappointing. What did they find out? They said, we have patrolled the earth. And behold, all the earth is peaceful and quiet. Imagine in the midst of problems, in the midst of disappointments, in the midst of hopelessness, they imagined they were peaceful and they were quiet. That is what we do when we don't want to address some of the issues that are facing us, that are facing our families. Now, when we talk of horns, what are we talking about? We are not talking about physical horns. No, we are talking about 
nations, powerful nations. In this scripture, we had four powerful nations. We had Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, and Medo Persia. Powerful nations. What are we talking about? We are talking about situations that are determined to see you destroyed. We are talking about situations that are focused. But I want to give you encouragement from heaven today that our God has got redemptive plans because God is powerful. God is able. God is merciful. So what does this horn symbolize? We are talking about power. Horns symbolizes power, strength, and real power. These are not small horns. We have got different sizes of horns, but I'm talking about powerful horns, powerful strength, powerful stronghold, things that hold you down and they want to make sure that you will not rise up again. Those are the things that are disturbing you. Those are the things that are disturbing your family. Those are the things that are contenting with your destiny. We are talking of authority. These powers have got authority. They are not just operating as powers. They, have, they are powerful and they have authority. We are talking about pride. These powers take pride when they see you down there. These powers take pride when they see you giving up. Don't give up. We are talking of honor. We are talking of dignity. Now, as I said, that horns have got a task. These horns we are talking about we are talking about demonic horns. They were given a task to accomplish. What was the task? The task was go and scatter them. Give them different tongues like the Tower of Babel. Confuse them. Make sure they don't agree. That is what they want to do to your family. That is what they want to do between you and your boss. That is what they want to do in your ministry. Scatter them. Can you imagine? Another point is disgrace them. Go and disgrace them. Shame. Rejection. Failure. Low self-esteem. Lack of confidence. Disgrace them. Another task was go and oppress them. Financially oppress them, spiritually oppress them, physically oppress them with sickness and diseases, oppress them. Another task was go and destroy them, destroy their, their fellowship, destroy their finances, destroy their bodies, destroy their spirit so that they can be discouraged. These are the points, these are the tasks that were given to these four horns. They did not just come for a holiday. They have come for you. They have come for your family. They have come for your business. They have come for your ministry. Now, I said that horns are divided into two. We have divine horns, that is strength, that is power, and we have demonic horns. When we talk about divine horns, we are talking of the power of truth. We are talking about God's hand, which is powerful. We are talking about shield. We are talking about the glory and the honor of God. We are talking about victory. You can find that in Psalms 8 and 9, 17, 18, 24, and 26. You can also find that in Exodus 27, verse 2, and Exodus 38, verse 2. We are talking about divine horns. 
Now we have already said, what have they come to do? We want to look at these demonic homes and understand their task. I am almost repeating myself because I want to understand why you are going through certain situations. I want to take you back to the beginning. There was disobedience, so God allowed the thorns to come and deal with them. Scatter your family. Go and scatter their families. Go and scatter their plans. Go and scatter their union. Go and scatter their ministry. Go and scatter their finances. And then, of course, opposition. They wanted to oppose. When you look at 1 Thessalonians 2.18, Paul was opposed. Satan hindered Paul when he wanted to go for ministry. Anytime you want to rise up to go, something happens. Anytime you're just about to get your breakthrough, something happens. And you've taken it as it is okay, it is normal, it is bad luck, it is the will of God. Come on. Opposition. They are opposing everything that concerns you. They are opposing everything that concerns your children. They are opposing everything that concerns your spouse. They are opposing everything that concerns your workplace. Also, they come to resist. They want to resist your prayers. You pray, pray, pray. There is no answer. You get discouraged. Sometimes people backslide. If there is no need to be a Christian. I want to tell you today that Daniel 10, 12 to 13, Daniel was opposed. The Bible says, that is Daniel 10, 12, 13. Do not fear, Daniel. So when they resist you, when they oppose you, when they scatter you, their aim, their aim is to create fear. That is why Daniel was told, do not fear. Don't fear. All is well. Don't fear. Daniel, for the first day you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. And I have come. Underline the word heard. And I have come. Underline the word come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. Let me tell you, resistance. They want to stop you from prayer and fasting. So what do they do? You feel like I have prayed and there is no answer. I have fasted. There is no need. I want to tell you that God has already released a, an, an answer to your prayer. But there is this horn that is resisting you from receiving your, pray, your answered prayers from receiving your blessings from your family being set free. It is not God who has stopped it. God has got good plans for you. But there is one who is bent to make sure that you don't get what you deserve. Because of lack of knowledge, what do we do when we face difficult situations? Number one, we live in denial. We want to assume that all is well and nothing is wrong. Yet deep in your heart, you can sense that there is something not right. All my children are not married. There is something not right. All my children are divorced. There is something not right. I start a business and it doesn't stand. There is something not right. I am always sick. From one sickness to the other, there is something that is not right. I am rejected even by all my own relatives. There is something that is not right. Number two, because you live in denial, you move on with life, business as usual. I just want to move on with life. I don't want to care about what is happening around me. I am moving on. You are moving on against resistance. You are moving on against opposition. You can't go far. You take two steps ahead. You go back 10 steps. 
Another thing what we do is we live in bitterness, distress, bitterness and distress. We are so bitter with ourselves. We are bitter with everybody around us. We are bitter with our surrounding. You lose your joy. Another thing is we live in self-pity. Whoa, yeah. You want everybody to sympathize with you. Those that don't sympathize with you are your greatest enemy. You want to bring in everybody into that problem. Not to help you fight, not to help you pray, but to sympathize with you, to keep you in that situation. Some of us, another point is, we build an emotional wall. What is that? Hostility. We are so hostile. We don't want anybody, anybody to come near us. We are so arrogant. We don't want anybody to come. And of course, you are keeping people away because of your behavior. And some of us, we seek counsel from anybody and everywhere. Anybody, whether they are born again or not, you seek counsel. You ask everybody to pray with you, to help you. You involve people who even have no wisdom. And the last group, they seek divine counsel. They seek divine counsel. What happened to the prophet? When he got this message that people are not bothered, people are peaceful, people feel safe, what did he do? After he got the report from the messengers, after you got the report from the doctor, after you got the report about your family, after you got the report about your employer, what have you done about that report? You will receive a report, of course, which is negative. Sometimes we receive reports which are not good. But after you have received that report, you ought to do something. Prophet Zachariah received a report. Verse 18 says, And I lifted up my eyes and saw. And I lifted up my eyes. It was his responsibility to see what he was going to do with that report. So what did he do? Number one, before he lifted up his eyes, I remember the, the initials, Initial uh, uh, verses that God called them. I think it's Zechariah 1 3. Return to me. God told them, Please, you have suffered long enough. Come back to me. That was the first step. Please come back to me, and I will come back to you. And God is calling you back again. Yes, you have suffered for too long. Yes, I know. I know. I know you have been pained. You have been disappointed. You have been hurt. But I say, come back to me. God was telling them, yes, you have ignored my prophet, but repent. Coming back means turn around. Repent. Confess your sins. Repent. And I will come and intervene. God is calling you today. He's saying, repent. Yes, the prophet, of course, was concerned about the situation. Like I am concerned about the situation you are going through. But the word is, repent. Return back to God, and God will return back to you. So verse 18 says, and I lifted my eyes. The minute the prophet lifted up his eyes, lifted up his eyes to heaven, he saw, he received revelation. You cannot receive revelation when your focus is on the trouble you're going through. When the focus is on the things that are happening around you, you got to stop somewhere and lift up your eyes and God will open your eyes understanding and you will see according to Zechariah 1, 18. And he saw, and behold, four horns. He saw four horns. God opened his eyes of understanding 
and he was able to see the four horns. Yes, he didn't have understanding of that, of the four horns, what the four horns meant, but he saw, he was able to see. Before he lifted up his eyes, he was not able to understand the situation that was around him, the situation around your family. Lift up your eyes so that you are able to see. Verse 19 says, And I said to the angel who talked with me, What are these? And he said, These are the horns that have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. They were not just horns. That vision you saw, can you go back to God and say, God, what does this darkness mean? What does this pit mean? What does this fire mean? It is good to ask questions. The prophet asked questions. Verse 20 said, Then the Lord showed me four craftsmen. And I said, What are these coming to do? He said, These are the horns that scattered Judah, so that no one raised his head. And these have come to terrify them. God showed him the horns. God gave him the, the, the revelation. And God gave him the solution. Why? Because he started by lifting up his eyes. They have come to terrify them. They have come to cast them down. There was a mission here. These horns, I mean, these craftsmen had been sent with a mission. You have been scattered. You have been disgraced. Your family has been disgraced. Your spouse has been disgraced. You can't even raise your head. Shame, you can't raise up your head. Shame is following you. Shame is overtaking you. When you get there, you find shame waiting for you. When you get there, you find rejection waiting for you. When you get there, you fall sick so you can't do anything much. Because... The thorns have been sent to scatter you. But I want to give you hope, brethren, that God has sent divine help. He has sent craftsmen to throw down those horns, to terrify them, to throw them down. Because you can't do it alone. You can't do it alone. Brethren, I know you have been going through tough moments. You are just wondering, what is happening with me? Could it be as a result of sin? Because right from Zechariah 1, there was sin in the land. They didn't want to listen to the prophet. They followed the wrong counsel. Could you be amongst them? Are you living right? All what you need today I have come with a message of hope. Return back to God and he will return back to, to you. Confess that sin because God is faithful and God is just. The minute you finish confessing that sin, lift up your eyes to the Lord. Lift up your eyes and you will see. God will be able to to make you understand what you're going through because you have lifted up your eyes, because you have made it right with God. Lift up your eyes so that you're able to see into the spiritual realm. When you put your eyes down, you are just looking at the physical, at the natural. But when you lift up your eyes, you are now getting into the spiritual realm where God will help you and God will make you understand. So how do you deal with these horns? Number one, identify the demonic horns. Talking about patterns in your life talking about patterns in your family. Identify that there is something not right. Look at, look, or look for that something, underline that. Something is terribly wrong. What is it? 
All my sons are divorced. All my daughters are divorced. I don't, I can't keep a job. There is something that is not right. Put it down. And once you have identified the demonic horns, acknowledge that it is true. These things are existing in my life. These things are existing at my workplace. These things are existing in my ministry. It is true. Acknowledge. And once you have acknowledged, what you need to do is confess and repent. Confess and repent. Before you get into the business of terrifying the horns and throwing them down, terrify them, read scriptures, terrify them, cut them off, destroy them, roast them in fire. Do not keep them. Don't have mercy on horns. They have come to destroy you. And if you don't destroy them, they will keep on destroying you. Identify, identify, acknowledge, confess and repent your sins. Then you start terrifying them. Stand up and say, in the name of Jesus, you are cursed today. In the name of Jesus, by the sword of the spirit, I cut off your horns. I cut off your power. I cut off your authority. Cut them off. Destroy them by the blood of Jesus, by the word of God, by the fire of God. The Bible says that our God is a consuming fire. Once you have done that, recover. Recover the lost glory. Recover whatever you have lost as the horns who are terrifying you, as the horns who are busy scattering your business. Recover. Is it your family you have lost? Recover. Is it health you have lost? Recover. Is it finances you have lost? Recover. Is it relationship you have lost? Recover. Just recover. Because you have destroyed the horns completely. Because the power was in the horns. And we have dealt with the power. We have dealt with the authority. So the horns are cut off. We have destroyed them by fire. Now you are free to get into the secret place and get your treasures. Now you are free to get into the secret place and get back your family. Now you are free to get into the secret place and get back your job and get back your business and get back your ministry. Destroy them. It is your responsibility to destroy them. Don't leave them. Because they have come to destroy you. Thank you so much for listening. This message is life transforming. Horns are real. Cut them off. Destroy them by fire. Cut them off by the sword of the spirit of God. That is the word of God. In the name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Overpower them. Destroy them. Father, we want to thank you for this message. Today, I want to declare and decree the horns that have been terrifying your children, they have come to scatter. They have come to terrify them. They have come to disgrace them. Any horns that is speaking over their lives, I cut it off today. I cut those horns. I destroy them. I roast them in the fire of God in the name of Jesus. For those that are discouraged, I lyri seeker matida. I release the word of God to refresh them. I release the word of God to strengthen them. I release the word of God to free them in the name of Jesus. None of them will be a victim of these horns. For all horns have been cut off. I declare freedom upon your children, oh God. Jehovah, I thank you. And I bless you. In Jesus' name. Please share this message. You can find us on YouTube. Rebuilding Broken Walls Ministry. Pastor Grace Kekuvi. We have got many, many powerful messages. 
Please find us on YouTube and subscribe. In Jesus' name, thank you and shalom.